welcome uh, Osho Krishnan on the technical side as well as on the research front. Snehi as well as Jinnay are with us. Very good afternoon to all of you and let me kick start highlighting the first stock or the sector maybe all together because it's the day of telecom pack because what we are getting to hear is that all these telecom companies uh, will have the Supreme Court hearing, uh, urgently hearing a curated petition against an earlier court order regarding the AGR dues and as we know that if these companies be the likes of Vodafone Idea and Bharti Airtel get a relief with their AGR dues then they could uh, help uh, use that money to repay some of their debts so indeed a positive news flow for all these companies and indeed city has come out with a very interesting note on Vodafone idea where they do uh, maintain their buy rating with the target price of 23 rupees what they're saying is that AGR case the company approaches Supreme Court for early hearing management is optimistic of a favorable outcome and believes that the government also remain supportive and the potential for reduction in the event of a favorable outcome of the curative petition could be around 30,000 to 35,000 crores and that could be the relief amount for Vodafone Ida and similar is what the analysts are expecting for Bharti Airtel as well and hence we are seeing both of these counters are in focus and holding on to the gains of 1 to 2 percent. Okay, surely keeping an eye out on uh, the telecom names, a lot of updates coming in on that front. Barosha, good afternoon and the first stock that you've picked out for us is Alcom Labs. Now, when you're looking at it, surely in the last one year, 46% return. But, uh, you know, the last few months, specifically, specifically the six months that you look at it, it's not managed to cross past that 4,500, 4,500 range. Uh, do you think this time maybe for Alcom we could see it cross that 5,000, uh, I beg your pardon, 5,500, 5,000 uh, range that we're seeing? So will it be crossing past that 5,400 range this time on the charts? Is it indicating that? Uh, very good afternoon, Vinny. Uh, firstly, thank you for having me at your show. Now, coming to the technical perspective of Alcom, then this time Alcom has seen a very strong traction in, from the uh, 100 exponential moving average, which was approximately around the zone of 5,000. And also on technical front, we are expecting or we are witnessing a kind of sloping trend breakout in this counter. So the time it breaches and sustains above the zone of 54, 50, 5500, this is a very crucial zone for this counter. Then we can witness a very strong traction coming in this counter for approximately 1500 odd points. So I'm expecting a very decent target of nearly 6500 to 7000 from medium term time frame. Uh, that's the take uh, coming in on uh, Alchem Labs, but uh, Winnie, let's talk about HUL then. Absolutely, HUL is the one that we're keeping an eye out on today from the FMCG side. Why? Because last evening they announced that they're going to be selling their water purification business, that is a purit business, uh, uh, to A.O. Smith. Now this is at a value of around 600 crores. That's almost two times the EV2 sales of FI24, so keeping an eye on that one. When you look at it in terms of the purer business for FI24, the sales were at around 293 crores. Now, this is obviously in line uh, with what the management has been talking about, that they want to uh, strategically focus more in terms of the core uh, categories and the core focus area is going to be on that. So, what analysts believe that uh, water purification business surely is a very highly competitive business, low product uh, differentiation that is there. Uh, so, because of that, Pricing as a price as a disruptor also is something that comes into factor and play for this business. Now, given that HUL wants to focus more on it, uh, this is a, a right step, and uh, they believe Nuama believes that this is slightly positive for HUL in terms of uh, when you look at it uh, overall the move that's coming in. They're maintaining a buy on this one. Even uh, UBS is maintaining the neutral rating, target price of 2,860 rupees per share. So today, when you're looking at HUL holding on to 3% gain as of now, and uh, yes, strong move coming in for the stock. All right, uh, that's about uh, HUL. Uh, but with this, um, Snehi, let's talk about Hats and Agro. What a, a handsome move in today's trading session. Tell us uh, how are the earnings and what's the news flow? Absolutely, Shrishti. So, very good move coming in in the stock price today. This is on the back of its uh, quarter one numbers. The stock also reached its 52-week high today on the back of a very solid set of quarter one numbers coming in. And the company has said that the summer that just went by um, did very well for the company. And uh, the ice cream business did very well because of the summer and the heat wave that uh, India just saw. Uh, let's uh, take a deeper dive with what, the, what these numbers look like. In consolidated revenue has come in at 2,375 crore rupees versus 2150 crores which is up 10 and a half percent year on year net profit also at 130 and a half crore rupees which is up almost 63 percent on a year on year basis 
EBITDA margins have also expanded uh, uh, smartly at 13.9% versus 11.1%, which is up 285 bips on a year on year basis, and EBITDA is also up almost 39% year on year. The company has also in, uh, declared an interim dividend of 6 rupees per share, and they've also said that they're going to hold a one on one meeting with analysts on 19 July. So we'll see what happens at that meeting, but well, yes, on the back of very good set of numbers, the stock is doing pretty well, up 5% as of now. Okay, surely keeping an eye out on Hudson Agro and almost trading at um, its three-year high level at one point of time. So interesting to watch out for that. Let's move on and talk about RT Industries from the chemical side then Osho. On the charts and technicals, what's the word coming in for RT Industries? From uh, somewhere in the beginning of the month of June, we started seeing an up move coming in. So is that something that we may see continue for RT Industries? Well, see, overall RT industry, as you have mentioned, from June onwards, it has started gaining traction. And on technical perspective, it has made a cup and handle kind of a pattern on daily time frame and also is emerged above all its exponential moving average. So I'm expecting the time it gives a decisive breakthrough above 715 to 718 odd levels. Then we can witness a very strong traction coming in this counter. And on the higher end, I am expecting for short term perspective, almost 20 to 25 points on immediate basis. That means 745 to 750 could be the target for short term perspective. But overall, on a larger picture, the counter is looking very positive for a target of approximately 820 from short to medium term time frame. Jolly, if you're keeping an eye out on RT Industries, you can see those numbers flashing at the bottom of your screen. So I'm going to give time to Shristi to actually do the number crunching. But, uh, you know, till then, uh, till Shristi looks at the numbers coming in for Bajaj Auto, you know, as of now, this is the poll. We're seeing it. It's in line largely, at least with the ET now poll in terms of PAT. But Shristi, you know, I'll yeah. wait for you to look at some of the numbers and then we'll come to you. Till then, let's go to Jinnai. Uh, Bharti Hexacom in focus on the back of a brokerage note. Well, yes, so Bharti Hexagon is focused as JP Morgan have come up with an overweight rating. They have initiated overweight rating with a target price of Rs. 1,280. Uh, they believe that this is the best market repair pure play for the company. Also, uh, they are expecting a, uh, a drive, a growth of about 20% CAGR in the revenues on the back of tariff repair and higher underlying returns. What they also believe is the stronger than uh, peer uh, ARPU returns and subscribers growth will act as tailwind for the company. Rising dividend will also uh, will, will be a benefit for the company as the company deleverages and that is why they believe that this company deserves a premium valuations compared to their peers. All right, then uh, those are the. Um, but let's shift focus to Bajaj Auto earnings. Mm -hmm. Then is the first auto, auto major coming out with a Q1 FY25 set, and looks like a good set indeed because the net profit is actually higher than what we were expecting at ET. Now the company has clocked in a uh, revenue uh, a profit of 1988 crores. That's slightly higher, almost 60 crores higher than what we were expecting at ET. Now and hence the jump that you can see on the stock price as well, and even the margins because we have been. Seeing Seeing that the company has been maintaining its margin all throughout. A 20% mark is what the company has been holding throughout and 20.2% pitta margin is what the company has seen and that's a improvement of 130 basis points on a YOY basis. But if we talk about the revenue, the revenue has clocked in at 11,928 crores and that's actually in line, um, almost in line, uh, slightly better than what we were expecting at ET now and even the EBITDA figure is higher. So all in all, a good set coming in for Bajaj auto is what we were also highlighting that in terms of the numbers you should not expect any sort of a disappointment here because the volumes have seen a jump of 7% on a YY basis and even the product mix was quite supportive there too with the domestic volumes were supportive enough and even apart from that what uh, the management has been highlighting that the export has uh, were already seeing some gradual pickup we also have the release from Bajaj auto so let's uh, try get in some more details on uh, that particular front what the company is saying uh, that uh, Cheta uh, volumes have actually doubled on a YOY basis. The commercial vehicle uh, segment that has delivered uh, uh, 100k units in the quarter form. Uh, for the Triumph, uh, they have delivered more than 60,000 of units since its launch is what the company have highlighted. But actually, uh, apart from that, the key to watch will be the booking number for their CNG bike because that's an exciting point for Bajaj Auto. Uh, 
uh, for this time around because it just got launched a couple of weeks back and there was so much of excitement building in that. Um, what the company has also highlighted this time is that they do have a strong balance sheet but apart from that it's also providing sufficient fuel for the future growth. Uh, the cash surplus stands at 16,764 crores and mind you that it's Bajaj Auto that has recently started a couple of years back to come out uh, with the uh, dividends uh, as well as some of the buyback announcements as well. So all in all, a good set coming in for Bajaj Auto this time around. It's uh, all guns firing once again for the company and indeed the move on the stock price. Okay, surely we'll keep an eye out on that one. Up 1% right now in trade. But let's keep it going with all the buzzers in trade right now. And let's just focus and talk about Apollo Tires because uh, this is one of the um, companies related to the auto sector that is seeing decent move today. And uh, today Morgan Stanley has actually come out with a note where they do maintain the equal weight rate, but their target price is actually lower than the current market price of um, of around 551 rupees. Uh, Morgan Stanley is looking out for a target of 470. Rupees. What they are saying is that though the stock has been moving in the com uh, the movement in the stock, one of the factors leading to that is the price hikes that all these tyre companies have been taking. But Morgan Stanley is of the view that the price hikes show a focus on the margins, but they see limited earnings upside in the view of the sharp rises in the commodity as well as the regulatory cost. And one of the key concerns for all these tyre companies have also been the EPR provisioning. So Morgan Stanley is highlighting two key headwinds that is the EPR provision cost and the steep rise in the natural rubber prices and what uh, what he meant by this is though the company has been um, uh, pushing uh, the prices up but apart from that the commodity prices are also rising and hence uh, the impact on the numbers could not be that substantial and that's the call coming in for Morgan Stanley on Apollo tires and as of now the stock is uh, showing almost 2% of gain. That's Apollo tyres for you all, but uh, also Osho, you have picked out Apollo tyres on the technicals. What is the word coming in for this? Uh, see, for Apollo tyre, it is at a very crucial resistance zone. We have seen such kind of highs in the month of February and again it is retesting the same highs uh, in today's session. But overall, this time it has been backed by very strong volumes. So I'm expecting that there can be a strong sustenance above 550, 555 zone can give a very strong follow-up buying in this counter. So on the higher end, the immediate target looking at the technical setup, I'm expecting of 575 to 580 on short-term perspective. And if it sustains above the same uh, over a period of time, then we might witness a very strong traction coming in the medium-term time frame. Okay, surely keeping an eye out on uh, uh, Apollo tires, on the fundamentals as well as technicals. Let's move on and talk about some of these life insurance names. And today we have uh, HTFC Life, I say Prudential Life, all of them in focus today. Now, uh, when you look at it, uh, we have a note that's coming from Morgan Stanley on um, HTFC Life as well as. Um, I say, say Pru. Now let me start with HDFC Life. What they're saying is they maintain their overweight rating, target price of 790 rupees per share. They believe that the share price will uh, rise relatively to the country's index over the next 45 days. Q1 results are expected to be strong for the uh, were strong, and overall the stock is something that has, la has lagged overall in terms of the move that we saw coming in for the broader markets. So now they expect that that is something that could see a run up. Recent numbers that came in from the company, one of the few quality stocks that they are watching out for in terms of attractive. Value valuations and that is HDFC life for them. For ICSA Prudential Life, they're maintaining an equal weight rating, target price of 610 rupees per share. What they say is that the share price again um, uh, will, uh, for ICSA Pru, they believe that the share price will fall relatively to the country's index over the next 45 days and uh, the, uh, seeing the sharpest VNB downgrades in the last two quarters was ICSA Prudential Life. So while obviously uh, HDFC Life is something they're positive on, they believe that uh, I say Sepru on the other hand is something that could see a fall coming in. So keeping an eye out on both these stocks uh, on the back of the note that we have coming in uh, from uh, the brokerage Morgan Stanley. All right, but once again, let's just focus uh, to Bajaj Auto earnings. Indeed, a good set by the company as we highlighted that the all the numbers were actually above than what we were expecting at TT now and a marginal beat on the margin front as well. And as we can see, the stock is also holding on to the gains of 2% now. But let's understand more with the expert then. And we are being joined by Abhishek Gaushinde, Deputy Vice President Research at Shere Khan. Hi, Abhishek. A very good afternoon and thank you so much for your time. Help us with your first cut on the earnings. How much... Um, um, 
how, how do you see the numbers versus your estimates as well as uh, what was the standout point for you in the earnings and the press release? Uh, broadly, what we can see that the numbers were in line with the estimates given that uh, uh, kind of a volume growth and the product mix that company has, been, has uh, reported. Uh, the key highlight of this number is that uh, the performance was largely driven by the improvement in the product mix in the motorcycle segment. It was largely the 125cc segment that has uh, uh, that has maintained the traction. And uh, despite that, the company has reported a 4% kind of a growth in overall motorcycle sales. But in that 125cc segment, which contributed 39% to the total uh, motorcycle volumes and has increased by 30%. So when this has uh, supported the performance, second is that the exports have been overall stabilized for last two, three quarters. That has been a supporting point. And third, that uh, in the Egypt, now that uh, this uh, quadricycle has been accepted as a public transport vehicle. And because of that, in this particular quarter, uh, the, uh, the export volume for um, uh, quadricycle has been doubled, uh, although it was a low base, but uh, it is giving an indication that going forward we may see a kind of a traction in the quadricycle, especially in the export segment. Uh, third thing is that the company has been sustaining its EBITDA margin at 20% uh, kind of range. We were expecting 20.3%, 20.2% we consider to be in range, and with that, uh, overall profitability came in the range of our uh, expectations only. Going forward, we are tracking the uh, the, the kind of a performance it will show with its CNG volumes, and second, the kind of a traction it will continue to receive in the 125 cc segment and the uh, electric three-wheeler segment, which uh, company has launched in the previous quarter. All right, but one more point I wanted to understand from you, Abhishek, because uh, you guys keep doing all these channel checks and after the CNG bike launch, what we understood is that all these analysts uh, took uh, this particular product very positively. So, um, do you have any channel checks or any updates regarding that, how this particular bike is being taken uh, uh, by the consumers because the bookings were already open from the day of its launch and till date, uh, any understanding that how the consumers are taking it, any sense on that? Uh, see, currently the product, I think it's not available at the dealership. Whatever the dealers are taking the initial booking from the enthusiastic customers. Generally, a product requires a six to eight month uh, kind of a performance on the road and then only we can say the what kind of a verdict it has. But beyond that, we should have to consider this is one of the uh, one of the critical products that companies launch, which is first of its kind in the world, and has not been considered in an isolation way. Uh, historically, company has been trying to uh, target this executive segment, especially the commuter part of the executive segment. Uh, with this product, the company might catch up something on this executive segment. You remember that few years back, it has tried to capture this executive segment by the discovery brand, but that has not happened. But with this price point, with the 125cc engine, and and a kind of a look that company has given a stylish look and a, uh, an urban-centric product, uh, we expect that a success of this product uh, will help company to open up a new set of uh, uh, revenue line for itself. But also depend on the kind of a performance it will gain in the six months, and uh, we are waiting for the verdict on the product right now. All right, Abhishek, uh, with this, we let you go and thank you so much for joining us to help us with your first cut and your first take on Bajaj Auto earnings. Indeed, that CNG product uh, will be available uh, uh, throughout many dealerships, uh, but in a phased manner, but indeed uh, taken positively. But we'll watch out for more management commentary, which is at 6.30 p.m. So we will watch out for more details when the con call begins. Absolutely, we'll surely watch out for that. But, uh, you know, uh, Snehi, I'm going to quickly come to you for HG Infra. Uh, why is this in focus today? Well, really, the company has received the completion certificate for a rehabilitation and upgradation project that they had undertaken uh, a few years ago. And uh, they had backed this order back in July 2017. The order was for 298 crore rupees. Completion date was scheduled to be in 2019, but due to the COVID delay, this um, project was completed actually in August of 2022. And a few days ago, the company had also received an LOA from the Rail and Development Authority uh, and uh, MK also came out with uh, a re-initiation 
in with a buy rating on this company. So overall, over a couple of days, we've seen a lot of announcements coming in. But today, on the back of this completion certificate that they've received, the stock is uh, doing pretty well, up almost five percent as we speak. Okay. Surely that is HG Infra that we are keeping an eye out on, but it's budget time. So, Osho, we will focus on some of these important trades that you are keeping an eye out on on the budget front. So, what are your trades that you are looking at for the budget? Uh, see, from budget point of view, uh, uh, the prime focus that is expected to be on the affordable housing finance. So, from the housing finance, Canfin Home is looking very positive to me, both from fundamental and technical point of view, because the PE ratio. is quite comparatively cheaper as compared to the overall uh, sector also on technical front we have seen a very drastic up move in the coming period so obviously approximately 15% has been the surge in the current calendar year but still it is having very strong potential so first counter is canfin homes from the housing finance uh, i am expecting a target of nearly 1000 plus from short term perspective and overall 780 should be acting as a very strong support zone but again as we all know that there will be quarterly earnings so one should definitely accumulate this counter in a staggered manner from the range of 880 towards 850 odd levels the second counter is from the power pack from power pack because the continuity of the government for the third time i am expecting that power sector will be having its positive momentum continued so from power sector ntpc is looking very positive again in this calendar year we have seen approximately 25% of returns in ntpc but again it is looking very positive on technical charts and i am expecting that from here onwards approximately 460 should be the target that one can expect from short to medium term time frame in ntpc and again 330 should be seen as the stop loss which is the closing of the election day which was the a steep low or a steep fall that we have all witnessed in the market and on the uh, staggered manner one should definitely try to accumulate in the range of 380 to 360 or lower okay osho thank you so much for that osho trades two trades come again buy for canfin home and buy for ntpc thanks so much for that osho if you like this video then like share and subscribe to et now